I went to a comic book show at a mall. What? Stick around. Hey, it's Ricky from All Sorts of Words, and that's that's what happened. I went to a, a mall a couple weeks ago, and there's a, a card store in the mall. Our card store, which I never want to be the one to shit on a small business, but like our card sounds too close to a word that we're trying to get away from as a culture. I don't think they're aware of that, so I'm not going to be the one to tell them. But I was at this comic store a couple weeks ago, and it's a comic and card store. And I was buying comics, and as I was leaving, the owner was like, hey, we have a show coming up. We take over the whole inside of the mall. You should come check it out. That's thrilling. I, I don't really have a lot of comic stores in this area, and I certainly since moving here, haven't built any sort of comic community. I, I've only lived in this town of Lewiston, Maine for 14 months now. And boy, I need to, I need to meet some folks. I'm perfectly happy locking myself in a house with a stack of comic books and playing video games until I die. But like, I'm a social creature. So I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I brought a stack of books. I'll flip through them right here so you can see. I, I really didn't have any interest in getting rid of the books I brought. I, I wasn't looking to get rid of them, but I wanted to bring some raw heavy hitters, books that are easier to find if in the future I had seller's remorse. Wanted something I could instigate trades with. I get to the mall, this mall, uh, incidentally. Look at this design for the sign of the mall. I love this. Uh, they even have like neon piping around the outside of the building, which is just the dopest thing in the world. It, it really has a cool aesthetic on the outside. On the inside, it looks like any other stupid mall you've ever been to. We're going to cut to some footage now of just a, a quick little walk around of, of what I ended up seeing. Now, it's, it's free to get in. It's, it's just a mall, right? But <laughs> this is not going to be an E-Rod video where I impress you with all of these incredible books that people brought out. Legit. The books that I showed you a minute ago that I brought for trade, had I set up a booth and put just my trade books on a wall that I built, my booth would have been the most impressive booth there. There weren't a lot of keys. There weren't a lot of big books. Um, dollar bin hunting was a blast and the people were awesome. But this, this was not like a heavy hitter show, I promise you. So this is how we're going to frame the rest of the video. I'm going to tell you about a seller I had a not so great experience with, two sellers I had an amazing experience with, and then at the end, I'll show you all the books I got. Cool? Cool. But first, the one I did not have a great time with. So uh, I go up to this guy and he's eager, real eager to make some sales. And he's he's talking to me like, I don't know anything about comics, which, look, lots of people don't. I'm not getting insulted. You know, the, the guy's never met me before. Why would he assume that I know everything about comics aside from the fact that, you know, I'm looking at comics? So he's largely trying to push a collection of recent Eastman and Leard Turtles autographed and sketched books. That's like his bread and butter, this this box he has full of sketches and autographs. And I'm uh, that's not me. So I say to him the same thing I say to every seller I talk to that day. Superboy, Adventure Comics, Legion of Superheroes. And of course, he didn't have any of those, but he directed me towards a, a box of bangers he had. And it was mostly Batman and Alan Moore Swamp Thing books. Now, everything was high grade. Don't get me wrong. But here's where... I have an issue with a lot of sellers that I interact with. And if you buy comic books, I know you're going to feel these things too. He showed me a Batman comic, this Batman comic. Uh, he showed me this and I said, hey, uh, you know, what are you looking for? It's one of the only key Batman modern e books that I don't have. So I'm, I'm interested. My man says $370. Now his book is raw. It, it's raw and... I'm conceding it's high grade. It is high grade, but it's raw. It's not slabbed. And let me show you this. This is the same book in a verified CGC 9.6 
for less money than my man was asking for raw. So like in what universe am I going to pay more for a raw book that could, that that's on that like nine point something line? Because we've all seen those videos. Hey, here's my CGC unboxing. And this definitely looks like a nine eight candidate. And what do you know? It comes out like a nine two. So like for him to like advocate for the fact that it's a 9.8, there's no guarantee that this is going to be a 9.8. And if you want a 9.8 price, send it off to CGC your damn self and then sell it to me for a 9.8 price. And I'll think about it. I really wouldn't have thought about it because I don't, I don't care about 9.8s. I, I authentically, I don't care. I just want the book. So I, I'll keep it real. I, I did the cowardly thing and I was like, I'll think about it but I wasn't gonna think about it. And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll put them over here for you. I continue my shopping and then I start buying things and I'm, I'm further up the row at the comic stands, like, like, cause it makes like a big loop. I'm further up the loop later on and I look over and I see him and I get this. Like my man's looking for me to come back and I'm just, yo, like real talk. I'm not going to pay even over like $150. I'm, I'm just not. You can go on eBay and you can get like a 6070 area book raw for like, I don't know, like 80 bucks. And I, I would have been happy with something like that, but my man overreached. You know, it, it was a high grade book. We went from him not knowing I was into the, the hobby that I was shopping for to him realizing, oh shit, this guy knows what he's talking about to still trying to sell me a book as if I didn't know what I was looking at. So didn't leave the best taste in my mouth, but he, I will give him this. He was a very nice guy. I would absolutely deal with him in the future. I just know that I would be a lot more heavy handed. This guy, this guy gave me his card. Uh, and he was lovely. Wait, what is his name on here? No, I really wish I, I, I knew his first name because as we were talking and as I was buying some books off of him, he was he was close to my age and I, I got the impression that it, at some point in time, if I had been like, hey, do you wanna like, do you wanna like hang out and talk about comics sometime? I got the impression he would have been amiable to that. We, we had similar personalities, we were, we were jiving. I think he immediately subscribed to my YouTube channel in front of me, which is just like a super class act. And he was selling comics with his best friend. It was kind of funny. He like, like he, his friend, had all the cards and the best friend who was also selling just wrote his information on the back of the card, which is just, they're like 99 cent for like a hundred cards. And he's, he's biting off his friend's card. I enjoyed both of them. And I, I bought some books off of both of them and I'll, I'll show those at the end. The last person I met persons, I should say, again, super nice. This is the most intriguing. And this is the one I'm definitely going to do more follow up on. Um, it was an older gentleman. I would say, realistically probably mid 70s and really charming really nice wanted to shake hands i love that his daughter who was probably uh, a little older than me was helping him sell comics and his house as she described it was full of comics so i said the same thing to them that i said to every other seller i was talking to that day superman adventure comics legion of superheroes and she goes oh wouldn't you know it those are those are literally the three books I decided against bringing today. So I'm sad because this, this guy, he's like my spirit animal. These are the people that read those books that I'm collecting now as a kid. So like we'd actually have a lot in common, even though there's that huge generation gap. She then tells me that they have a store in Portsmouth, which is the, the big city in the area of Maine that I live in. It's like 45 minutes from where I live. It's by appointment only. And it's a house full of comics. It's his collection, the dad's collection. So to go into someone's house and go comic shopping, that sounds like too much fun. So look, real talk, I'm broke. I am dead broke until literally like May. In May, I'll have money again. But like, if you've been watching this channel recently, you'll know how much I've been spending. I'm also getting hit with a thousand dollars for my editor when uh, I, I that that bill comes due in the next couple months when he gets my book back to me. I also have to then pay the formatter to get the, the formatting done and the cover artist, and so it there's a lot that goes into getting a book out. That on top of all of the comic collecting I've been doing recently, it's just it's 
I'm I'm putting a kibosh on spending. It's not happening. So I I want to keep lines of communication open with them, and I think it would be really fun to go to like a house sale with like a grand and and you know I'm not looking to spend a grand, but if I have a grand with me to be like let's let's see what you got, let's see what we can work out here. That'd be really fun. So I'm gonna reach out to them. But those are the people I met. That was the fun that I had, and so now it's just a matter of showing you the books and the dollar bins were a poppin' at this convention. So I did some deep diving in some dollar bins. I'm going to, I have the comics all organized by the individuals I bought them from. So you'll be able to see the stories they correlate with. I bought from the nice guy. I bought from the nice guy's friend who wrote in the back of the business card. And then I bought from the dad daughter duo. So here we go. Let's see. Was, was $200 that I spent? Was that worth it? You tell me. So here is the first pile of books that I got from that nice guy that would probably be friends with me. Uh, Lady Cop, first appearance, first issue. I've been looking for this one for a while and the, the price was just right. I, I think this is an absolute ridiculous concept and it's just, I'm going to have to read this and do like a whole thing on it. It's just too fun and silly not to be revered. He also had this Vampirella Virgin variant that I did not have. It is unusual for me to find Vampirella Virgins in the wild. Usually I have to get them online, so when I find them in person, I dive. He also had this Vampirella Red Sonia. Not gonna lie, I really, really don't like her face. I think that is is kind of ghoulish. Uh, not, the, not the prettiest Vampirella. Red Sonia looks fine. Vampy just looks a little gross. He also had this variant, which I don't know if, if, it's, if it's gonna come through on the camera, but like it's got a pop art, kind of like little dots throughout. And there's this interesting effect that you get with the blue lines. Almost like, almost like it looks like this is a acetate cover, but it's not. I really enjoy that one. It actually comes across the most in his signature, I think that like blue and black line. This book finally came down to a reasonable price because of the movie and people were wigging out about Supergirl. I, I think Action 252 was out of the realm of possibility for a lot of people. So a first appearance of Supergirl uh, in, in modern DC continuity was exciting. It is a very high grade copy. I'm going to 100% collect this entire Jeff Loeb, Batman and Superman run. This is a really great read. But uh, I just, I was priced out of this book for a while. I, I didn't think it was worth the $40 people were asking, but now it's finally at a good price and I snatched it up. This is the book I got from his friend, uh, the, the best friend that <laughs> put his name on the back of the business card. Uh, it does come with a COA that it was a 500 print run. And it is uncommon for, like I said, for me to find Vampirella books in the wild virgin variant covers. And there's a couple of things you look for. One, she has an interesting costume. That's always something. Two, the moon. The moon and Vampirella, because of her first issue, have this like really strong connection. And so that's great. And then also pet bats. Pet bats are great. Okay, now this last uh, pile of books, and it is a pile. I, I didn't really mention this this group that I bought from. It was two dudes. Uh, we had a fine, pleasant conversation, but their, their dollar books were insanely good and their prices on keys were so reasonable that I, I actually picked up a few. And these are the prices that I actually paid. So this is a uh, Adventure Comics number 300. This is when Adventure Comics turned into the Legion of Superheroes. So this is, this is when it all became about them. Usually in a low grade like this, you're looking at like $50. Mid grade, you're looking at 80 and it can go high grade all the way up to like two, 300. So $35 is a perfect price for a book like this. But this is, this is for all intents and purposes, this is the Legion of Superheroes number one. This is a book I've been looking for for a while, but the prices have been kind of dumb. Uh, um, Black Lightning, number one, first appearance of Black Lightning. He does become a leader of the Justice League for a period of time. I believe it was like 2008, 2009. He was, he was the leader of the team. Great character, but like 
it, it only seems like the market has room for high grade copies of this book. And I don't want to pay a hundred dollars for a character that's not very popular. So $18 for a lower grade copy, middle to low grade, I'm totally fine with. Everything else I'm about to show you is all from their dollar bin. Uh, I Red Sonia, She Devil with a Sword number one. I wasn't sure what this was. I know what Red Sonia number one looks like. So maybe someone in the comments can tell me. But uh, a Red Sonia book with a number one, this is a great cover. This will go with all my other Vampirella, Dynamite, Red Sonia covers. I think this is a great addition. I found this, again, I don't know anything about this, Kong the Untamed. Great cover, really dynamic movement, kind of a troll creature here. I assume this is Kong, because I can't imagine this would be the face of the main character DC would create, but it looked cool. Um, I'm going to go through these a little faster. These are all the Amalgam comics. These are all the comics that came from that venture with DC and Marvel fighting each other. So this is bullets and bracelets. Looks like a Wonder Woman, uh, her tough guy outfit they gave her in the 90s, and then... Uh, a Punisher-like character. These are all these mashups with Marvel and DC. So Bruce Wayne, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. JLX, obviously Justice League and X-Men. Going right into that, we have Storm Wonder Woman. Uh, this was stuck to the back of another book. So this makes my first X-Men book that I've ever owned. Assassins, which... Uh, perhaps Electra, and obviously that's like some sort of like Slade kind of kind of character. I, I don't know what's going on here. I'd have to read all these. This one heat up, was heating up for quite a while. Uh, uh, Spider Boy number one, first appearance of Spider Boy, I, I guess, or the name Spider Boy, I guess. But a, for a buck, sure, and especially if I'm picking up all the others, like Magneto and the Magnet Men. <laughs> Magnetic Men, which uh, is the, the Metal Men that it's referencing here, and obviously Magneto, who looks a lot like Onslaught in that picture. Doctor Strange Fate. Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate. This one looks awesome. Super Soldier. Superman and Captain America as one character. Love it. Then we move into the Star Trek books, because I am a huge Star Trek nerd, and Star Trek books for a dollar? Yes, please. Deep Space Nine. I don't know the difference between these two. But I mean, obviously there's a different publisher. This is Marvel Paramount, and then that is Malibu Comics. So I, I'm gonna have to read both of these and see like, what is the difference? I don't even know which is the first appearance of Deep Space Nine. Voyager number one. Boy, they're like really trying to drive home that you should have bought this back in the 90s. And then here we go. A bunch of Star Trek The Next Generation Volume Two. So many, so many Star Trek books. These are actually, these are always really good. They're really good stories. They, they take the series sometimes in, in action-oriented places that the show just couldn't afford to do. Dixon Hill is on the case. I love this cover. Yeah, I, I have quite the collection of Star Trek The Next Generation books. And I, I want to make the entire set and I want to read the entire set in one sitting and then like do a back to back watch of the show to see maybe if I can fit these comics into continuity. Yeah, that's gross. That's a gross cover. I, I feel like if you're a Star Trek fan, this is the best time to buy these comics because they're so cheap. I wouldn't even say this is a deal. It's just... They should be a dollar a book. The fact that you can get them so cheap now, it's it's just finding them. Like most people don't bring this stuff to conventions. Like what's the point? They're only gonna sell them for a dollar and it's, it's really heavy to transport books, but it is what it is. And I'm just, I'm so happy to get this stuff now. Okay, last couple books here. To serve and destroy. <laughs> this, <laughs> my, your eyes are supposed to go here. And notice the actor's likeness. But this is, what is, what's Billie Eilish doing? I really enjoy this color, this cover, this, this web wrapping up the ship. And then we end on fire. That is all. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, stick around if you want to see more. And uh, love you, bye.